Hi guys, Lexi here from the PR Bar Inc. And today I'm gonna work on helping you up your PR IQ. Now, in my experience, one thing that really separates the good PR pros from the bad PR pros is their understanding of the media. Thus, for all my clients, I always like to help them understand the media. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna work on upping your PR IQ. Now, the first thing that you should understand is who the media finds credible. Now, I'm not talking about who you find credible. I'm not talking about who your best friend finds credible. I'm talking about who the media find credible. Why is understanding who the media finds credible important? Because it allows us to send pitches backed with assets and information that they find credible, thus helping increase our chances of coverage. When interviewed, what do you consider credible for reporting? How did the media respond? Well, 90% of journalists consider academic subject matter experts to be their most credible source. Secondary to that was a CEO followed by an in-house PR representative. Who do they find not credible? Social media influencers and quote unquote self-proclaimed experts. I went ahead and created a very high level media credibility chart, which I'm gonna share with you right now. Cool, so this is how you use it. Left-hand side is very high level, what the media considers a credible source. Right hand on the other side, they don't immediately trust. So left side, we have government websites, um, we have mainstream wire services, this is where you pay to release press releases. We have other high, highly regulated or high authority sites, so think the New York Times, Los Angeles Times, Wall Street Journal, and then as we now know, academia experts. Who do they not immediately trust? Well, hashtag news, less regulated sites or opinion blogs. These have been huge during COVID-19. Influencers, usually across social media, and once again, self-proclaimed experts. So how do we use this information? Basically, when we are drafting a pitch, we wanna stuff as much assets or information from that left-hand column as possible. Okay, so the second thing I want you to understand is what the media considers shareable, right? What makes a story shareable in their eyes? We have some more stats for you on this. All right, coming in first place was if the subject matter is connected to a trending story. This is really, really important. So does your pitch or the angle that you're pitching connect to anything that's trending in the world? Um, now, I don't know when you're watching this video, if you're watching it live, then obviously COVID-19 is the main trending subject of the world. Second place is that it contains an image. If you think about it, writers want you to share their articles on social media because the more that you share, the more eyeballs get on that article, right? Well, social media today, what makes something shareable? Imagery. So on the pitching end, if you can present or offer high quality images, that's going to help your chances of getting placement. And then third place is that it can be easily localized or it is relevant to their target audience. You have to realize that each and every outlet caters a unique audience, right? Um, outlet A might target entrepreneurs, outlet B might be hairstylists. So they care about if the story is content that is curated and would serve their audience. So rather than thinking about, you know, is the story great for my audience, think about who you're pitching to. So top three things are that it's trending or uh, connected to a trending subject, two, it contains an image, and three, it's easily localized or relevant to the target audience. Now, the third thing I want you to understand is that you have a huge, I mean freaking huge opportunity to stand out in the market right now. Why? When interviewed, journalists reported that only 1% of the pitches that they receive are considered relevant which by the way mine is mind-blowing to me it basically means that you have an opportunity to be better than 99 percent of every single pitch out there so your goal should be to be that orange dot that's my thing i'm starting it be the orange dot so when asked what makes a writer otherwise reject a relevant pitch what did they say 
First, lack of personalization. This is another thing that's really important to understand when we talk about the media. They care and they want the pictures that hit their inbox to be personalized. They don't want to feel like one of 500, right? So make sure you understand the writer's beat and who you're pitching. The second thing that makes them reject a pitch is bad timing. There are a lot of different things that can constitute this bad timing. One example is, are you aware of their publishing deadlines? If a newspaper, for example, publishes on a Friday and you hit their inbox at 3 p.m. on Thursday, that's just straight up bad timing. Other things that are bad timing, you know, talking about the best places to travel right now amongst COVID-19. Third thing was that it was just too long. The sweet spot that you should try to aim for is between 200 to 300 words. Um, don't go much longer than that unless you really already know the journalist and you have a relationship. So we're just scraping the surface, right? We're starting to understand who and what the media finds credible. We're starting to understand what they consider shareable. So what makes a story in their eyes shareable? And then three, we're understanding how freaking big of an opportunity there is because so many people aren't pitching relevant topics. Do those three things, integrate all of this knowledge into your PRIQ, and you're gonna be killing it, guys. If you have any questions at all, you can follow me on social media at the PR bar underscore Inc. Hit up my website, theprbarinc.com, and remember this, be the orange dot.